yards his first few years, big numbers at touchdown passes, obviously broke records throwing interceptions. He, like Cam Newton, Jacoby, got humbled. They ended up playing on one-year deals as backups. And now to your point, he's in a quarterback battle with Taysom Hill. And if you look mm -hmm. at the history of both of these guys' careers, one of them went number one overall as a quarterback and show me that he can make all of the throws. The other guy was a Swiss Army knife that they kind of developed into a quarterback. So the way he played last night, hopefully that's a precursor for what we're going to see for him this season. There is no longer a question in my mind who the Saints starting quarterback is. And don't forget this, Jameis Winston, 27 years old. He is still a young man with a lot of football to play. Sean Payton, the head coach of the Saints, was still non-committal before the game. Here's what he said before the contest last night. So what's your timetable look like? By when do you one. want to decide? I don't have one right now. Before we play the first game. So he still won't name the starter, but Jalen, there's no question in my mind who is going to be the starter. Is there any chance that Taysom Hill becomes the starter for the Saints? No, but there will be times, Jacoby, and rightfully so, that they're on the field together making plays, explosive plays. You've got Alvin Kamara, one of my favorite backs in the league, the glides like Gale Sayers. The key, however, is going to be Michael Thomas. Like a couple mm. of years ago when he broke the, cat, the record for catches and how he performed, to being injured last year, being in and out of the lineup last year, not catching a touchdown last year. If they can get him back healthy, now that Jameis going to be throwing the deep ball, then they say that was the longest deep ball that somebody as a Saints quarterback <laughs> has thrown in years. You know what I'm saying? So Michael Thomas going to be happy to get back and unlock, unlock that part of his game that he wasn't able to necessarily take advantage of later in Drew Brees' career. Absolutely. When you look at Michael Thomas's production just two years ago, I'm mean, 16 games, 149 receptions, over 100 yards per game. And last year, when he was on the field, he was not as effective. Perhaps Jameis Winston can unlock Michael Thomas when he comes back. You mentioned that Winston was the number one pick. The Saints were playing the current number one pick, Trevor Lawrence, last night with the Jaguars. And Lawrence did not impress. It wasn't all his fault. He was under a lot of pressure. Do you think they are putting Lawrence at danger by starting him? Danger! Danger! Get on the flow! Absolutely! You gotta put Gardner Minshew in there, dog. Let him take that punishment. Him and the handlebar um, mustache. Let, let them deal with that. You gotta protect this prize number one overall pick. Now, we've seen this in the history of football. Various teams handling it different. I remember mm -hmm. when Troy Aikman or Peyton Manning took their punishment early in their careers. Or more recent, Joe Burrow, who was playing and throwing like 40 times a game and ended up getting injured. Or Kyler Murray, who started also as a rookie. So there are certain guys that have done it. There are other guys who have not done it. For me, the infrastructure, a lack of run game if Etienne is going to be out. He left the game with a foot injury, right? And so now they thought he was going to be not only a, obviously a top flight pick, but a, a, like use him like a receiver. So without yep. one of his weapons and without an offensive line, they set the number one pick up to get killed, man. Don't start it him week one. It reminds me of Burrow. It reminds me a lot of Burrow. We were watching Burrow last year, just concerned every time he took the field. It does feel like perhaps protecting Lawrence is more important, and maybe the best protection for him is to not be on the field, because this Jaguars team does not look good. And Jalen, I'm not going to overreact to preseason results. Oh, wait, I'm totally going to overreact to preseason results. <laughs> Urban Meyer just looks a little over his head. Like, you're watching the game, and he's just frustrated. They can't move the ball. There's a part of him It's like, man, I was making a lot of money coaching college perhaps that's where I should have said we've seen it time and time again college coaches take the level up to the NBA or the NFL it just does not translate hopefully for Jaguars fans that will not be the case here but in the preseason it does not look good 
for the Jaguars. Jalen, it's time for us to turn our attention to a story that's been simmering under the surface all summer long. Ever since the 76ers lost in the playoffs, Ben Simmons has been the person. He's been the person, the lightning rod for criticism that everyone is pointing to as the problem for the 76ers. He reportedly does not have contact with the team this offseason. Is there a chance, do you believe, that Ben Simmons will not report to camp? Could he hold out? Or would, could this be like a James Harden situation? What do you think the future is with Simmons and the Sixers? I think ultimately he ends up at camp. It's not in either side's best interest for him not to be at camp. It's definitely not in his best interest to do what James Harden did and that show up and be out of shape because he's not a former MVP like James Harden is. So with that being said, I don't believe this deal happens this offseason, Jacoby. Now, the way you and I believe in Ben Simmons, we can't ignore the bizarre fourth quarter performances in the playoffs this year. And so he's going to have to build that value back up. If I'm on the phone with you and you talk about give me a player and give me like two or three first round picks, not after that series. Like, we mm. saw the Paul George deal, the Drew Holiday deal. Like, there have been deals where multiple picks got exchanged, but not when they passing up layups in front of Trey Young at the hoop. So he's going to have to build his value back up. They're not going to want to move him for less. So don't be surprised if this goes into training camp, if it goes into the season before he's actually moved. Well, we will see what happens. I do believe he does get moved, but he might start the season on the 76ers. And every single August, I see the same thing, Jalen Rose. I see Ben Simmons on Instagram making three-pointers. Every single <laughs> August, he is on the gram making three-pointers. I wouldn't mind if he actually did that during the season because obviously unlocking a jump shot and his confidence internally and externally on the perimeter is important for him moving forward. Important for the Patriots moving forward is that they have Cam Newton available to them. He is not available now. There's been some misunderstanding about where and how he could get tested. So he is now out until Thursday where they have a joint practice. Hopefully he'll be available then. Cole Beasley of the Bills is also unavailable. Beasley has been very vocal about not getting vaccinated. Jalen, do you think that this sort of unvaccinated part of the NFL will continue to rear its head as we head into the regular season? This isn't political. This is not radical. Get vaccinated. Even if you don't want to do it for you, do it for your teammates and your organization because there's going to be a player at this rate that's going to cost his team football games and game checks. And you know what's going to happen when that takes place? Those guys that you thought were your teammates, your homies, the people you thought had love for you, they're going to start looking at you way different when you start messing with their money. That's what I have to say about when I hear this story, David Jacoby. Look at this protocol. It is obvious that the NFL lets you know if they're not able to reschedule the game, people are going to lose game checks. There are going to be some unhappy NFL players this season. Yep, there also there's been a handful of Cowboys staff and players that have also tested positive, turning them into a virtual practice team. This is going to again affect this year in a way that it doesn't have to, because as you mentioned, vaccines are available and I think that everyone should be vaccinated. The science backs that up. I got COVID. I feel that my symptoms were lessened because of my vaccination status and I wish that everyone stays healthy. Jalen Rose, we have some very important news that matters. Jalen, my timeline has been completely taken over by people walking <laughs> over milk crates. I cannot look at my phone. I cannot look at my phone without people falling off of milk crates. Jalen Rose, what do you think of the milk crate craze taking over the world? You know, the one thing I am not trying to do is fall. So, you mm. know, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm against anything that may make me tumble like that and fall on my hip, fall on my head fall uncomfortably on my neck and my back, I'm not gonna be able to do it. It just showed me how times have changed. I grew up hooping on milk crates. 
You know what I'm saying? Not people walking on them for other people's pleasure on the internet. But I've seen some really good ones. I mean, Shout out to the people that have been able to complete it. But those falls is hard. ugly. <laughs> it's hard. I just we, I don't know what That's nice twinkle you toes. To do this. Those are nice twinkle toes right there by her. Great <laughs> twinkle toes. Give her, her, money. her money. Give me her my money. money. I love it. I love it so much. I will not be climbing on any milk crates. You will never ever see me do it. I've seen enough people break their backs, break their necks, break themselves climbing over milk crates. And she kind of jumped off it. I don't know. I don't know if that counts. Does no, that, that count, counts. Jay? That definitely that counts. counts. <laughs> that okay. definitely counts. Because you know somebody can fall, that'll get ugly. That ground is hard. And them crates hurt too. That's a double pain. Jalen Rose. Some power rankings of NBA teams have been released. And my Los Angeles Lakers are not where they should be in the power rankings. This is disrespect and more fuel for LeBron.